Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to work a My Math Lab question uh, on a hypothesis test involving the population mean when you don't know the population standard deviation. Uh, we're going to do this uh, using raw data um, and perform all the analysis and jump. Um, this way we don't have to fill out a template and um, we could just pull all the results right out of jump and then go ahead and answer all the different parts that they're asking us about in this particular question. All right, so let's give it a look. Um, it says, according to a survey, people in a certain country ate an average of 208 meals in restaurants in 2001. The data in the accompanying table show the number of meals eaten in restaurants as determined from a random sample of people in this same country in 2009. And then it says, complete parts A through D. All right, so first let's give a look here. The data is in this little table. Let's open it up. All right, looks like we got 20 pieces of data. Randomly sampling 20 people and seeing how many meals they ate uh, that particular year. Uh, there's a little icon right here, which will allow us to copy the data to our clipboard. So while we're here, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say copy to clipboard. And I'm just going to control C that really quick. So that's on my clipboard. We're going to have to paste that in the jump in a few minutes when we open that up. So let me close this data up. All right, so let's give a look at letter A. It says, using alpha equals 0 0.02, okay, it's a 2% significance level, test the hypothesis that the number of meals eaten at restaurants by people in this country has not changed. All right, so currently they're saying it's, oh, well, you know, in the past, I'm sorry, it's been 208 meals. And if it hasn't changed, um, that means it's still 208 meals. So what we're going to test that against is that it's different than 208 meals. So for the, num for the null hypothesis, we'll say that the population mean mu is 208. And then for the alternative hypothesis, we'll say that the population mean is something different than 208. So this would be a two-tailed test. Uh, so if we look at the um, multiple choices here for our null and alternative hypotheses, um, that looks to be like it's a letter A, that the population mean is 208, and then the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is something different than 208. All right, so let's give our answer a check. All right, fantastic. All right, let's see what asks, asks us uh, next. Determine the critical values. All right, so now the critical values, remember, are the critical T-scores that are going to be required in order to perform this test using the old-fashioned um, critical value and testing statistic method. You know, remember jump, it's going to give us all the analysis at the same time. So we're going to be able to simultaneously use a p-value methodology or this testing statistic approach if we'd like. But this is a two-tailed test, remember. And there's these critical t-scores that are here and here that cut off this area. Now the alpha level, remember, was 0.02. Actually, let me move this off to the side. That means the confidence level is 98%, so that's what we put in here, 0.98. Remember, zero's in the middle here. So if alpha is 2%, that means each of these tail areas are 1%. That's alpha divided by 2, so that's 0 0.01. Same thing here. Alpha divided by 2 would be 0 0.01. And then, you know, our decision rule would tell us if our, if our testing statistic lands within this non-critical region, then we won't be rejecting the null hypothesis. And if the, crit if the testing statistic is greater than this positive critical t-score, you know, whatever that is, we'll reject the null, or if it's less than this negative critical t-score, we will reject HO. All right, so what my math lab is doing right now is it's picking our brains and saying, hey, what are these critical values? All right, so we could get these critical values several ways. Uh, one way is to use the table that they give us in my math lab. I mean, they give us tables right here, you know, the student's t-table. So we could go to the table if we'd like. Another way, um, we could use our TI graphing calculator. And in the distribution menu, it has a function, option 4 here, called invt. And what invt needs is it would need the area on the left. So say we were looking for this critical t-score. The area to the left of it, as you can see, is 0 0.01. And 
So I have that area in there, 0 0.01. And remember, there were 20 pieces of data in that data set. The degrees of freedom are 19 and minus 1. And there you have it, negative 2.539 um, would be that critical t-score on the left. Negative 2.539. And by common sense, this is positive 2.539. So that would be my critical values. Now, jump will also give those to you. So you don't, if you don't feel like doing all this um, work with the picture and going to the calculator or a table, you know, jump's just going to hand you that anyway when we import the, import the data in and run the hypothesis test. So I'm grabbing this number now only because it's asking me for it. But the reality is we could just go ahead, rate the jump, and run the test and get all the info right out of it. But let's go ahead and pop that in there. So that would be plus and minus. Notice there's a symbol for plus minus here in, in uh, my math lab. And it tells me to round the three decimal places. So that's 2.539. Looks like I got two decimal points in there. All right, so there we have it. Let's check our answer. Well done. All right. All right, now it wants the testing statistic. All right, so now we could actually calculate this by hand if we want. But like I said, you know, let's go ahead and run this and jump. So what we need to do in jump right now is we need to get the data in there. Now remember, I copied the data to my clipboard before. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open a new data table. And I'm going to paste the data in. So I'm just going to go to edit. Remember, it's copied on my clipboard. So if I just hit paste, it should just dump it right in there. All right, there it is. Okay, so um, you know we've we've been speaking about over the last couple of weeks with with the last couple a uh, few videos um, how to use the um, add-ins menu that we have. So if I go to the add-ins menu, and there's these statistical calculators, there's a hypothesis test for one mean. So let's select that. Now in a prior video, I've showed you how to use this same um, calculator. Um, using when you have the summary statistics. We don't have the summary statistics. In other words, we don't know what the mean and sample standard deviation for these 20 pieces of data are yet because we haven't calculated it. So we're going to tell uh, Jump, you know, the first thing Jump asks us, it says, all right, what are you giving me? Are you giving me raw data or do you have the summarized statistics? Well, you know, we have the raw data. So I'll say OK there. And you got to drag the variable in there. Now I chose, you know, it's called column one. Um, you could obviously uh, rename that by clicking on that column one and just renaming the, the header of the column to, to say number of meals or meals or something like that if you'd like. I'll just leave it as column one. All right, so once I dump the variable in there, I'm going to say OK. And it's going to kind of run the, the, um, the test, but it actually doesn't actually perform the test. What it does is, is it gives us the sample statistics. So notice it shows us the shape of the distribution. It shows us the sample mean, sample standard deviation, and the sample size. So if we were using the template, we could, you know, put those values in. But now it kind of picks our brain again and wants to know, what are you doing here? Are you running a z-test or a t-test? All right, well, we don't have the population standard deviation, so we're going to go ahead and run a t-test. The second uh, menu item here, as you can see, is what kind of alternative do you have, right? We knew that was a two-tailed scenario. We've already put that in, inside of uh, my math lab. The hypothesized mean. All right, well, I believe it was 208, but i got to look again because I forgot. Uh, yep, the hypothesized mean was 208. And then the significance level is 0 0.02. And you know what? I'm going to tell it to reveal the decision as well. All right, so what does it do? First of all, it calculates the standard error of the mean, which is sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, um, but in this case, we don't have sigma, so it's actually s divided by the square root of n. It calculates the testing statistic, which is a t-score. It calculates the two t-critical values, positive and negative, um, 2.395. And then it gives us what we call the p-value. And look at that. Since I clicked the reveal decision box, it even tells me, hey, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, what does that mean, fail to reject? Well, remember, this testing statistic... Jump just calls it t-score, or if we, we selected z-test over here, it would have said, um, it'll say a z-score there. But if I go back here, that value is 0 0.005 approximately. 0 0.05, which is, you know, the testing statistic, is about 0 0.0051. 
that number is landing like right here. It is landing in the non-critical region, and when that happens, the decision rule says, fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so a couple things that we have in our head right now. We've got our testing statistic. Let's see what um, my math lab wants right now. It wants the testing statistic to four decimal places. All right, so that's going to be 0 .0051. Let's go back there and verify that in jump. Now, once in a while, you know, that one right there could be a rounded value. Um, so we just got to be careful with that. Sometimes, you know, you, you grab your number and you go back to my math lab and you pop it in here and, you know, you're pretty convinced of it and it says you're wrong and it has to do with rounding with the way jump rounds. So 0 0.0051. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So what conclusion can be drawn? All right. Well, we already know the conclusion. We just spoke about it. So the testing statistic lands in the non-critical region. The decision rule says fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so let's go ahead and pick that choice out of there. Uh, so I see two of them say do not reject. Do not reject is letter A, and letter D also says do not reject. All right, so we got to look and see what it says. Um, the data provides sufficient evidence to conclude that the average number of meals has changed. No, okay, we know it's not that. Do not reject no hypo hypothesis. The data do not uh, uh, provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the number of meals has changed. All right, so that looks like it's the answer right there. All right, fantastic. Press continue to see more.